Hello and welcome back to my channel, L History. I'm so pleased that you're here. This is a Once Upon a Woman video on Catherine de' Medici. And Catherine is one of my favorite historical characters of all time. I know what you're gonna say, but she has the reputation of it being the evil queen of France. Yes, she does. But in this video, I hope that I will show you that actually she was more human, more compassionate and more vulnerable than you thought she was. I want to burst the myth around her dark legend. But who was she? Catherine de' Medici was the daughter of Lorenzo II of Medici, the Duke of Urbino, and of Madeleine de la Tour d'Auvergne, a very important French noble family. And here we had an alliance between France and Italy between these two houses. Unfortunately for Catherine, her parents died when she was only one month old. She was the orphan of Florence. She was raised by her aunts and grandmother, but they also died when she was very young. The next kin to take care of her was Pope Clement VII. And at that time, he changed everything for Catherine as she became a very important political pawn in the European diplomacy. She became betrothed to Francis I of France's second son, the Duke of Orléans, Henry. The two were 13 years old and they kind of like, we thought that it might be, you know, a good match, a good marriage. In 1533, they were married in Marseille and Catherine fell in love with Henry instantly. Unfortunately for her, he was already in love with someone else. His tutor, the magnificent Diane de Poitou, was 20 years older and apparently who taught him way more than languages. <laughs> and here we have Catherine de Medici in the shadow of the court of France, trying to find her way. And in 1536, fate struck and Henry's older brother, another Francis, died, which made that Catherine and Henry were now the Dauphin and Dauphine of France. Catherine, the orphan of Florence, was becoming the Dauphin of France and the future Queen Consort of France. Never in her life she was born to be queen and yet she was in the middle of her politics and of everything that was so important in 16th century Europe. More importantly, when she became Queen Consort of France in 1547, she also didn't realize that she was going to have children finally because, you know, the years of infertility marked her and really depressed her. In the end, with the help of Diane de Poitiers, which was quite hard for her at first to accept, and if you want more details, please look in my book, Blood, Fire and Gold. You'll have all the details you need about this very particular moment of Catherine's life. Catherine became the mother of 10 children. And yet, there are lots of myth, dark myth and dark legend around her. So let's bust those myths together. A myth number one to bust is the fact that Catherine was a manipulative, cold, insincere person. We have this image of Catherine doing everything she could to be in charge and that she loved power so much that she would betray everyone around her. We could not be further from the truth. Catherine was a very loyal person. And when she accepted you as one of her own, she was extremely loyal and protective. It is true with everyone around her. It is true with some of her privy counselors, with her uh, secretaries. It is true with her ladies in waiting. And it is true with her children. Of course, it doesn't mean that in the course of her life, she didn't have disagreements with these people, which created tensions, and that her detractors were going to use to, against her to make her this kind of dark queen, the dark manipulative queen, this manipulative mother, manip manipulative advisor. But hear me out. In truth, all the decisions that Catherine made were always with in mind the best interests for her kids, for her children, for her friends. She always wants the best for the people she truly cares about. Now it is also true that obviously Catherine de Medici loved power. Power was a way to protect her. 
and it is a way to protect anyone you know i mean that is why so many people are drawn to power and catherine saw power as a way to protect herself but not just herself her children her family her daughters she had a very close relationship with two other daughters elizabeth of valois and Claude of France. And it is true that with Marguerite of Valois, Reine Margot, the Queen of Navarre, the relationship is going to be more complicated. And it is mostly because of their different personalities. Marguerite of Valois, and I will make a video on her at some point, was a free spirit. And it is true that Catherine liked being the advisor, being, you know, mothers know best is really how we can describe Catherine. So she liked advising and didn't really appreciate that Marguerite would often tell her that actually she knew best herself and that she didn't need her mother's advice. So there was some clashes there. Yet it doesn't mean that Catherine did not care. It doesn't mean that Catherine was manipulative. Catherine always, always put her children first and always try to protect the Valois dynasty. Myth number two that we're going to debunk right now. That Catherine de Medici was some sort of murderer and that she poisoned her enemies. The biggest myth around that, the specifics of that, comes from the idea that she poisoned the Queen of Navarre, Jeanne d'Albret, in 1572. In June 1572, Jeanne d'Albret died. And a few weeks before that, she received gloves from Catherine de' Medici. Those gloves were um, a gift from Catherine because they had agreed on a marriage between Jean d'Albret's um, son, Henri de Navarre, and Marguerite of Valois, the untamable daughter of Catherine de' Medici. There was, it was an alliance between Protestant Navarre and Catholic France. Something very important for Catherine. She hoped that that marriage, that union, would bring peace and prosperity to France, especially because of all the religious civil wars that had ravaged the country for over 10 years. So when she sent the gloves, it was said that her perfumer had poisoned the gloves and so that it would kill Jeanne d'Albret. First of all, there is no evidence whatsoever of the gloves being poisoned. But second of all, now we have to think about why would Catherine de' Medici do something like that? She got everything she wanted from Jeanne d'Albret, the Queen of Navarre. She, they agreed on a peace union. They agreed that you know Navarre and France should be allies. And they agreed on a marriage. So there was no, you know, there was no reason for Catherine to want to get rid of her enemy a supposed enemy. Also, the death of Jeanne created lots of problems for Catherine. It was two months before the marriage between Jeanne's son and Catherine's daughter. The fact that Jeanne was not going to be there was creating a problem for Catherine. She needed the whole family, she needed the crown. And also, night was even more problematic because before, Margaret was marrying a prince of Navarre and now she was marrying a king of Navarre. It might have been a step too far right now for the ultra-Catholics of France who saw that union as a betrayal of their faith. So there was really no reason for Catherine to get rid of Jeanne. And there is no evidence whatsoever of Catherine being a poisoner or a murderer. I hope that now we can really forget about these lies about her because they have no foundation whatsoever. The last myth that we're gonna completely bust in this video about Catherine de' Medici is the one that has stained her reputation for centuries. People believe that Catherine de' Medici is the reason of the religious civil wars, that she participated, that she encouraged the civil wars. More importantly, her detractors and people who created her bad reputation believe that she had something to do with the St. Bartholomew's Day massacre in August 1572. We talked about the marriage between Henri de Navarre and Marguerite of Valois. And that marriage happened in August 1572. During the night between 23rd and 24th of August 1572, it's when the massacre in Paris happened. Thousands of Protestants were killed and butchered 
and it was absolutely awful. The news spread all over Europe and it was a shock for everyone. So how did it start? It started with the Guises, Mary Stuart's cousins, who wanted revenge for the death of their father in 1562. The father had been killed by the Huguenot leader, Coligny. So during that night, when they thought that all the Protestants, all the Protestant leaders, Huguenot leaders, were going to attend the marriage and they were going to spend some time in Paris, they thought it was their good opportunity to murder Coligny. All right, let's stop right here. Yes. Catherine de' Medici and Charles IX of France might have known that the Guises were seeking revenge. They didn't know when it would happen, they didn't know how it would happen, but they believed that yes, something bad would happen. Yet they tried to defend Coligny. Coligny was brought to the French royal family, they called their doctors, their best doctors, uh, Ambroise Paris was one of them, to try to save Coligny. So again, they were not siding with the Guises. But what definitely not happened here was the fact that what happened next is the Catholic mob took that, you know, act of revenge and then there was like fury and, and, and fear that spread in the city and the Catholics were just butchering and killing the Protestants who had been coming for, to attend the wedding for the wedding. So here we have no reason to believe that Catherine encouraged this or wanted this. It was not good for her politics, it was not good for her country. It is easier to control a country when it's at peace rather than when it has war. And Catherine knew that very well. Also, Catherine saved Sir Francis Walsingham, the, the English ambassador at the French court, who was a Protestant. She opened her door to any Protestants who wanted refuge. So if she was responsible for the massacre, why would she try to save the Protestants that were there? This is a myth that has stained Catherine's reputation and that was created by her detractors who blamed her and her sons, the Valois kings, for their inaptitude to save the country and to bring peace and for letting the religious civil wars go on and go on for over 30 years. Yet there is no evidence whatsoever that they wanted the wars, that they promoted the wars. If anything, in fact, they tried always to bring peace back in France but they did fail. So here it was my video on Catherine de' Medici. I hope that now you can understand her better and know that she had nothing to do with the religious civil wars in France. Thank you so much for watching. I am so appreciative of your support. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like that video and to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.